Today's video will be all about perception and awareness. Hey fellow heights. R-E-A-L-I-T-Y. Yeah, why and what exactly? Hey fellow heights. Have you already trained your awareness? If not, this video tells you about the necessity and how you can do it. If you're already familiar with practicing awareness, have you ever asked yourself this question? What exactly is awareness anyway? We are facing two major problems here. Well, what is reality and how do you perceive it? So let's start with a philosophical mind experiment. Every morning you wake up and start your day. Every night you go to bed and dream away. Dream, dream, dream. So now let me ask you this question. What is it that makes you decide that whatever happens in daytime is real and whatever happens in your dreams isn't? You distinguish between two states, but what exactly differs one from the other? And how can you tell the one being real in opposite to the other one being an illusion? And what is the illusion? And can you even tell one from the other? At Stanford University, where they study lucid dreaming, they suggest to do a reality check once in a while. So you could establish whatever you like as your personal reality check. It could be pinching yourself or touching something that's concrete. And just ask yourself while doing so, is this reality? Is it? If you get used to it, you'll find yourself do the exact same things in your dreams. And you may be surprised about what you're going to find out. Is this reality? There are two very famous experiments to show us what's happening. One explains how funny and not at all physically reality really is, if you still dare to call it that after hearing about it. The other one tells you that there's an imposer living inside of your head. But let's start with the basics. Let's start with the double slit experiment. It all started in 1801 when physicist Thomas Young did the first double slit experiment. Until that day, everybody assumed that light would come in particles. Young proved that light had to come in waves. So water, which definitely moves in waves, behaves like this. If you place something on the surface, it will produce some waves from the thing that you placed on the water going outwards, growing bigger and bigger and bigger and forming a pattern rising. And when you place a wall into the water with two slits in there, the following happens. The wave breaks on the wall, the amount of water passing through the slits produces two new waves having the slits as its centers. From there on, every half of the split wave gets bigger and bigger again, but wherever they interfere, they erase each other and build a new pattern. So when Thomas Young placed a light source in front of two slits, the same pattern occurred. The physicists freaked out. Till this day, everybody had always thought about light coming in particles, but particles would never behave like that. They would always form the exact same pattern like the slits they have moved through, but light scatters. However, physicists still think about lights coming in particles. They think about this whole universe as kind of a mixture of waves and particles. I guess that's a big misconception. There are other theories like the wave pulse model, for instance. So the struggle went on. Waves or particles? In 1998, a German physicist called Weizmann reenacted the double slit experiment with electrons to find out the craziest observation science has ever found. They shoot some electrons through those double slits to find out that when being observed, those electrons would behave like particles and when not being observed, they would form patterns like waves do. Hmm? Crazy. So this is what's called the observer effect. 
And it shows us that A, the universe is interacting with us and B, whatever outcome you expect from whatever, it will most likely have exactly the result that you are looking for. So the universe is interacting with you and it always plays out the way you expect it to be. So if you think it's particles, it will be presenting itself as being particles. Thus, whatever you expect to happen may happen if you believe in it. But bear with me, the other experiment is so much funnier, I promise. <laughs> it's the split brain research by Dr. Michael Gesinga, most of all his storyteller experiment. I told you about the imposter living inside your brain. Here we go. Dr. Gesinga used a tachistoscope on a patient called WJ. A tachistoscope is a device with what you can stimulate both of your brain half separately, showing images to the left or the right eye alone. WJ was perfectly capable of telling what he was perceiving with his eyes. But after that, WJ went into surgery where the two hemispheres of his brain got divided. And when they reenacted this experiment after that, a crazy thing would appear. Whatever got presented to his right eye, he could totally tell and describe what he was seeing. But that changed as soon as they showed something to his left eye alone. Our left eye is connected to the right side of our brain. So what happened when he saw something with his left eye only? Well, it was as if he wouldn't be seeing it at all or he just couldn't describe it. He couldn't tell what he was looking at. However, when asked to pick up the item that the eye would be seeing with his left hand, the left hand would totally do the job. So let's say he was shown a chicken, the image of a chicken, and when asked to pick up any random item, he would pick the plastic chicken lying on the table. And this is interesting. He could see it and his left hand could do the job. So there was just the person between hand and brain, not knowing anything about it. And when asked, he would just make something up, being totally convinced, saying something like, oh, oh yeah, I am hungry. This is why I picked up the chicken. So it wouldn't even doubt its own perception. Your brain is used to just making things up. <laughs> so they reenacted this experiment with many other people to find out that this would always happen. Whenever something was shown to left eyes or the right side of your brain, people couldn't tell what it is, but they could pick the item up. But when they did so, they would lie about why they would have been doing that. <laughs> so this is the scam happening in your brain all the time. So again, because this is very important, people would not even be guessing they would be feel perfectly certain about their answers. You don't question your own perception of reality. <laughs> but others do all the time, right? <laughs> this is very important when it comes to understanding perception. The first experiment shows us that everything always happens the way you expect it to happen. And the second one shows how the left side of your brain will fool you over and over again just to make sure that you're perceiving everything the way you're used to. No surprises. Nothing unexpected will ever happen. Your left brain, our left brains, keep us under their control. Having said this and that about perception, let's move on to consciousness. Sorry, someone broke in a few days ago. Since that, I'm a little troubled whenever I see something moving outside. So, 
yeah this is my brain also yeah interesting isn't it this is what it has to be playing out all the time watch attention take care close the door are all the windows closed <gasps> i'm sorry so this is my brain progressing the information from the last days sorry for that Woohoo! so consciousness we're in big advantage here knowing the internet and stuff i mean if i tell you that there's a field of information that you can switch into from wherever you are to connect with everybody else from all around the world and to receive any information you want to you'd say yeah of course wi-fi exactly this is why today it sounds very plausible to talk about the quantum field or um, something that you can connect to if you are having the right receiver to process the information coming from this source for instance this video here you can watch it wherever you are having a monitor that uh, transforms the information into pictures or something like that to process the sound that you are hearing so it's it's not pictures of me wandering all around the world it's just information zero one one zero zero one one and you do have the right receiver to process this information and to make it to, into something that you can perceive and just like your computer turns that into perceivable pics and audio your brain receives information and presents it to you the way you are perceiving things so there's no such thing as a physical word there's only your way of decoding perception of it so remember this philosophical mind experiment maybe if a tree falls in a forest without someone witnessing it does this tree make a sound well i was a little child when being asked for the first time and i was very annoyed by the answer because the adult who asked me told me that if you are not there to witness the tree making a sound then there's no sound at all i was so annoyed thinking what why are people so arrogant why do they always feel like they are the center of the world so if i'm not there nothing's there what kind of a delusion what kind of a psychopathic idea is that i understood it just recently because when you're not there to hear the sound how could you tell that there's a sound because sound is what your brain makes out of those waves that happen to develop when a tree falls for instance so what we are perceiving as sound is actually just a wave a frequency like like my door ringing let's check who's there oh yes wait a minute mr postman hey 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 mr postman yeah that was the <laughs> postman <laughs> Oh, the postman just asked me what I would be filming and I was saying that this is a channel about magic and he said something like mm, uh, magic it's basically just using energy right yes he knows so a falling tree doesn't make any sound at all a falling tree produces some waves and your brains perceives that as being a sound However, you can't tell how other beings perceive this sound or if it even is a sound. Hmm. Or do you maybe remember being a child and someone tells you how some particular animal would perceive this world, like this dog sees only black and white, the cat sees only green. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about those ways of perceiving. Um, However, it's different 
But have you ever wondered if maybe your perception isn't the right perception? When we agree that everybody perceives everything in a different way, every being, every, and even us, um, then we have to agree that perception is just one thing and it ain't got to do with reality. So the universe is full of waves, some of them perceived by your instruments that you use for perceiving and processing information some of them beyond our perception. And remember, 8,000 of those frequencies at any second are filtered out from billions of other information I told you about in that video. So now we do only know two things. Light, like everything else we perceive, mostly comes in waves. We see through light, thus we are processing waves with our eyes and brains. What we hear comes in waves, what we see comes in waves, what we speak are waves. Well, to break it down to its core, everything we perceive and process are waves. What we make of these waves is heavily disrupted by number two, the storyteller. We do know that as soon as we perceive something, the storyteller in our left brain gets switched on analyzing whatever we may receive and makes it impossible for us to notice anything else than what our left brain wants us to. So may I ask you again, what is reality? And could it be that while you're sleeping, you're actually just perceiving some information while your left brain is sleeping and doesn't interfere? I'd say that your dreams are as real as your adventures in daytime. You're still receiving and processing information just in a different way and different information maybe. This time it's maybe just without being fed disinfo from your left brain. So this could be the reason for why we feel like there's no way explaining what we sense in a dream. Because your right brain isn't used to tell stories. You're right brain can just create and this is where it gets so interesting creation but first now that we know about the thing we call reality and our perception of it we need to think about awareness and consciousness so let's see it like that first there's reality then there's our perception of it our awareness and the main last goal would be consciousness, overall consciousness. First there's the real world, then there's our perception of it. Some of it we are aware of and some of it we aren't. And awareness is the prerequisite for consciousness. At any moment you are kind of aware of everything surrounding you. Let's say you're in a forest. Your brain is aware of all the circumstances there are. You are aware whether it's the day or night time, aware of the weather and temperature, of the sound of birds and quacking woods. Those are all influences your brain processes while you're standing there. Those influences can be measured in your brain waves. Keep that in mind. Your thoughts are kind of physical. What you are being conscious of is another question. Consciousness can be perceived in many different layers or dimension. Whether you're being conscious about the birds, for instance, you could reach many levels of consciousness. So let's say level one would be to not just process the sound, but to really listen and to certainly know that they are there. So if you reach level one of consciousness, you go, hey, I can hear birds sing. There are some birds. Level two would be to consciously know where they are. Level three would be to recognize that this bird is, let's say, a robin redbreast. Therefore, the sun will be rising in the next 50 minutes. It's sometime between March and July and I am not fooled by the beauty of this sound. I know what they are saying. Get away, everyone! That's my tree! F off, silly biddies! Come on over, sexy chicks! 
Level 5 is being able to get in contact with this bird, if you still want to after you heard what he just said. Level 6 is understanding its message without being misled by your left brain. And at the highest level of consciousness, you are the bird yourself. You are the trees that all the birds are sitting on. You are the air all of you are breathing in. You become part of the wood white web. When you are being born, you have absolutely no idea about your body and that there is an end to it where space begins. You don't know that those feet constantly crossing your vision belong to you or what they are there for. They just are. You've got no idea of above or below, left or right, and the moment someone picks you up, your whole vision changes. You sort of move through dimensions, having no clue what is happening to the space surrounding you. Surrounding? What's that? You seem to be everything at this point. As a baby, you perceive everything as being one. Everything is you, basically. You are the unknowing observer, thinking he's the incident. Maybe baby you is surprisingly right having this idea, even though you can't call it an idea at this point, can you? Let's get back to us being babies. So while you are lying there, starting to learn about the difference between you and your surroundings, a conflict arises. Because while your brain starts developing, working with all those influences that are getting received and processed through your eyes, ears and other senses, another thing starts happening. Manipulation. Call it embossment. Call it influence, culture, whatever. First, they are your parents, siblings and other relatives who keep forcing their perception on you. They tell you what green looks like, that a cat goes meow and a dog woof. Your brain can never develop freely just learning from making its own connections or conclusions. You will end up being fed what other people do see, smell, feel, hear, believe and so on and so on. <laughs> Arthur Schopenhauer said, Jeder sieht die Grenzen seines Gesichtsfeldes als die Grenzen der Welt an. Or in English, every man takes the limits of his own field of vision for the limits of the world. <laughs> Very true. So unwillingly, people will force their personal borders on you. This influence on each and every brain is the culture you're living in, the family you're born into, and so on and so on. You can't escape. And while the right brain has no say in it, the left brain passes on its idea from generation to generation. From generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. If through meditation, yoga, listening to music, dancing or whatever you do to set your mind into a higher consciousness, um, you will become one with your consciousness or Let's leave it at consciousness itself, because it's not really yours, seemingly. If you think about it a little deeper, it can't be yours. It kind of feels as though your consciousness would be the center of your pure being. This is your core, while at the same time, it seems to be something that is responding to you from the outside, interacting through thoughts, ideas, symbols and images. So when reaching ultimate consciousness, you are at the same time centered inside yourself while watching yourself from the outside, kind of. This is the paradox of it. It's hard to wrap your head around it. You can sense it. You can train to feel it more and more, but what is it? For me personally, it is the tiniest spot that everything, everything is concentrated into and I'm not holding my ha hands here by accident. This is where I sense it. We don't have the answers to the most significant questions. It is the core question that we can't answer, whereas we observe it, we try to calculate and measure it, but without a clue what it is exactly, we're categorizing all the time. So we start from a misconception. This world is totally unknown to us. Most of us rely on science to explain this word. Science, however, relies on physical evidence and observable and repeatable facts. 
to find something they call objective truth. However, there's no fundamental reality. Everything is perceptual reality. So therefore, science can only measure the observable, which separates the subject from the object. But your awareness is the observer. It can't be observed. We can only experience consciousness through our awareness. Science is stuck in the materialistic world, depending on atoms, for instance. But in this universe, atoms are a very small part. The rest is antimaterial. Heisenberg said, dass das, was wir beobachten, nicht die Natur selbst ist, sondern Natur, die unserer Art der Fragestellung ausgesetzt ist. So in English, what we observe is not nature itself, but nature exposed to our method of questioning. So the method of questioning is crucial. The initial point dictates the outcome. The Indian Vedanta has much better answers for those questions than modern science has. We will be talking about modern science and the conflict of modern humanism in another video. For now, back to the Vedanta. This ancient idea about consciousness is that there is only one consciousness. We are all part of it, playing it out. So imagine this idea. Consciousness is everywhere and everything has always been and will always be. It is experiencing itself through us. And this is maybe what we are here for, to entertain an overall consciousness for it to learn about itself. So, fellow hearts, let's take out one of the most controversial books of all times, and I bet you have it with you because everybody seems to have it. Get out your Bible. Bible study time. <laughs> In Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And in John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the book of Moses is telling us about what God did, and John tells us how he did it. God was using words to create this universe. And he started with light. Stop. He started with saying or thinking or having a desire for light. Light, therefore, is a very important spell. It's the first word ever and the first creation that ever got made. It's the most powerful energy perceived by everyone, by every being on this planet. It is what God used to create this universe. And for today, I think that's all we need to know. We will be diving deeper into topics like that. Just... You should hit the subscription button and the bell right next to it so that you'll never miss any video. I don't know why to tell you that. I mean, if you like my videos, you will come back, won't you? Do whatever you like. For now, embrace your consciousness. Play around with it. Try choosing realities that seem plausible to you and you alone, in a playful and joyful way. Just make yourself comfortable and never be scared. Philosophical. Philosophical. Yeah. Philosophical.